Good evening, sports fans, and welcome to another exciting edition of High School Sports here on your high school sports leader, Oregon Sports Beat. Tonight, from Strasser Field at Delta Park, it's 6A Boys Soccer featuring the Central Catholic Rams and the Glencoe Crimson Tide. Hi, everybody. I'm Dave Hall. I'll be doing the play-by-play. -play. We are just underway. We got an early start. The JV game just finished. That was won by Central Catholic, 3-1. to one. We're just underway here. And right off the bat, we had a goal, a Central Catholic goal. There are four 12-minute quarters in lacrosse. That score coming at 11.14 left to go here in the first quarter. One to nothing, our score, Central Catholic leads. Central Catholic, white uniforms, scarlet trim. They move from our right to our left. Glencoe, black uniforms, red trim. They're moving from our left to our right. Thanks for joining us tonight. <clears throat> We're kicking off the lacrosse season. Tomorrow night we'll be back here at, at uh, Delta Park for girls Central Catholic action against Liberty. At halftime, I'll tell you where, or in between quarters, I'll tell you where we're going to be this weekend. So stick around for that. But thanks for joining us on Oregon Sports Beat. In goal for the Central Catholic Rams, that is number 20, Sutton Yazzolino. In goal for the Glencoe Crimson Tide, that is number 25, Pierce Flynn. Central Catholic with the ball behind the net. They're going to pass it around the outside. One to nothing. Rams lead. Rams with the ball. There's a shot blocked in front by Pierce Flynn. And here comes the, the tide back with the ball. People up front or offense are called attackmen. Midfielders, much the same as in soccer, and then defensemen. You can go back behind the net. Lights are on here. There's a shot. Wide to the left. That shot was by number two of the Crimson Tide, and that is uh, Thomas Tackley. Glencoe with the ball in front of the Rams net, loses it, picks it back up. Now they'll throw it around the outside, that's number five, that's uh, Royce Faisal. Back to Thomas Tackley. Crimson tried to, trying to set something up. Looking for a cutter inside. There's the ball loose, headed out to midfield. Tied with the ball, we're just underway here in first quarter action. We're at Strasser Field at Delta Park. One nothing Rams lead. There's a shot wide, picked up by the Rams. By the way, the Rams have played four games so far this year. They, I'm sorry, this is their fourth game. They are one and two on the season. Glencoe Crimson Tide have got in a bunch more games. This is actually their 11th game and they are five and five.
I talked to Rams coach Josh Peck before the start of the game. He said, said the team is playing well. They were looking forward to tonight's action. Crimson Tide with the ball. Right near the net, Peck's back out front. All right, that was a goal. That was a goal by number five, and that's um, Royce Fazel. That ties this game up. Yes. So one to one our score here. Rams with the ball. Action behind the net. That ball goes out. Rams with the ball. That was number 15 for the Rams, and that is uh, Elliot Evans. Rams send it in, number seven, Tavis Chandler. Starts in pushed off and sends it back behind the net. And back out on top. Rams will start it over there, number five, Ken Faulkner. Rams with an early goal within the first minute of the game. Tide is tied it up, one to one, a goal by Fossil. And here comes Crimson Tide back. Just save, Rams pick it up. And out, that ball was out. It was picked up over there by number seven, Tavish Chandler, but it was out. I also had a chance to talk to the referees before the game started tonight, and they told me that normally they'd have three referees in this game, but referees are in short supply. In fact, one of the referees actually came down from Washington to do this game. Ball in front, picked up by the Rams. Nice job defensively there by number 23, Gavin Jackson. That ball was loose in front. Jackson back over midfield. Chandler with the ball. Back behind the net. That's number 12, Christopher Gray. Before the game started, I had a chance to talk with one of the dads. I was talking with Steve Skaborski. His uh, son is number 13, the defenseman for the Rams. And he was telling me he's been to five Olympic of, uh, uh, venues. Thought that was an interesting fact. 
here to watch his son play tonight. Ram through the ball in front, the shot, and there's a goal. <laughs> Number 12, Christopher Gray. Right, Christopher Gray with the goal, 2-1 to one Rams. Two to one, Rams lead, face off in the center. Referee sets it down, takes a look, make sure everybody's set. When you hear the whistle, that'll be the start. Referee set, steps back, the whistle. Ball comes loose, picked up. The tide. Thanks for joining us here. Our opening game for lacrosse will be with you tomorrow night back here at Strasser Field, the Delta Park, Central Catholic Girls and the Liberty Girls. Tied with the ball behind the net. Looking for somebody out front. There's a shot. Wide to the left. Tied behind the net. Tied around the outside, looking to get inside. There's a shot, it's wide to the right. Rams come down with it. Yazzolino, the goalie, comes up forward and then throws the ball down inside. Ball loose in front. Rams come up with it. There's a whistle. With the ball was Elliot Evans. We're in the middle here of the first quarter. There's four 12 minute quarters. Two to one, Rams lead. All right, my broadcast partner, Steve Roberts, is here. Let's get him a headset and get him hooked up. We're here at Strasser Field at Delta Park, middle of the first quarter. Rams scored in the first minute to take a one to nothing lead. Tide came back and tied it up. Now the Rams have scored again on a goal by Christopher Gray. Two to one Rams. Sounds like I missed. Sound like I missed some action here. We are right here in the middle of the first quarter, Steve. Two to one Rams. Sorry, I'm late. Um, carry over from being in the end of the quarter and report card to do and preparing for conferences. Steve is a teacher at uh, Saint Ignatius. Thanks for joining us tonight. While I got a chance, I'll remind you that tomorrow night, our start time is 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock, girls action, Central Catholic and Liberty. Saturday afternoon, we're going to bring you the 25th edition of the Northwest Shootout. That will be at Liberty High School. It's the outstanding high school seniors from Oregon, boys and girls against the outstanding seniors from Washington. Boy, girls game at 4 o'clock, boys game at 6 o'clock. Join Kurt Goldsdorf and I with the action on that game. Next week we have a, a, a girls lacrosse game scheduled for Wednesday night. And then Thursday night we have, or Thursday afternoon we have a, a, a softball game here at Delta Park. Yeah, that shootout should be quite interesting. Usually there's lots of scored points, a lot Whoa. of talent on the floor. You usually have an entertaining day of basketball. Wow, they have some great players. 
Rams with the ball. I don't know if you got a chance to hear, Steve. This is the fourth game of the season for the uh, for the Rams. They are one and two. This is actually the eleventh game of the season for Glencoe, and they are five and five. Both teams are kind of in a feeling out process here. Sounds like both teams went early to the to the net. Rams had actually got a goal within the first minute of the game. In fact, they had the face off, came right down and scored. Took advantage of an opportunity, sounds like. Ball loose in front. Rams trying to find it, and it comes out. Picked up on the outside by number 12, and, th and that is uh, Christopher Gray, who scored the last goal. Back out on top, number seven, that is uh, Tavish Chandler. Rams shot off the pole. Great way to shoot that ball is down low and uh -oh, skip it we in. Have a breakaway here. See if anything develops. Tied. Came down on the breakaway. Oh, shot score. All right, that's a goal, number 19 for Glencoe, and number 19 is Ryan Morrow. So we had a, a Central Catholic goal, a Glencoe goal, a Central Catholic goal, and a Glencoe goal. 2-2 two -two our score. Headed for the faceoff right now. Faceoff for the Rams is number one, Luke McGilligan. Glenco ahead. In the middle. Be back behind the net. Send it high out on top. Teams like to work the ball around the top and then run a cutter through the middle, see if they can get a shot right at the goalie. Central Catholic doing a nice job of clogging up that middle there this time. Tied in front with a save. And is that the end of the first quarter? Yep. End of the first quarter after one, our score. Glencoe 2, Central Catholic 2. I want to tell you about our great sponsors tonight. Our title sponsor is Hunt Painting. Hunt Painting is proud to, to sponsor Central Catholic Athletics. They're now in their third generation of students at Central Catholic, and they're happy to continue to be part of the Central Catholic family. Here's to another great year of success, both on and off the field, for all Central Catholic student athletes. Our other great sponsor is Pacific Fence, and Pacific Fence is a Schoenheit family business. They've been serving the Northwest since 1921. From backyards to ball fields, from prisons to primary schools, Pacific Fence had you covered. Need a fence? Call Pacific Fence. We finished one quarter of action and we're even here at Strasser Field at Delta Park. Two to two is our score.
you know, I forgot how cold it gets here at Delta Park, right next to the river and wind blowing. Yeah, I um, I have to be careful. The cop seems to want to return whenever I get cold. Steve has been sick since forever. Birth. Yeah. <laughs> I have this ongoing um, cough. You ought to go up to OHSU and volunteer to have a study done on you. Well, you know they, you know that is where I go to the doctor at and. Um, you know, they were curious why my heart was beating so slow for a while there. <laughs> and um, they took care of that. And, um, they, they took x-rays and found you, you did, didn't have a heart. Yeah, you know, the doctor was like, are you alive? He came in and took my post and said, are you alive? Are you go, yeah, I'm talking to you. Thank you. You're a heart doctor and you're telling <laughs> jokes. jokes. Yeah. yeah. It was all good fun. I had a good time with those guys. Right, we're getting ready for the start of the second quarter. Quarter to 12 minutes. Hey, what was the flag? No flag? All right, there was a little bit of confusion. We thought there might have been a flag down on the field before the start. Was there a flag? It uh, looks like they're awarding the ball to um, one team. So. Ah, they are. Might have been an equipment violation on Central Catholic. As a result, Glencoe has the ball. The team's changed ends. Glencoe now moving from our left to our, our from our right to our left. Black uniforms, crimson trim. There's a hard shot from outside. The ball loose, picked up by the Rams, sent out. Tavish Chandler with the ball for the Rams, brings the ball up. Burn it, burn it. Chandler there with the ball, number seven, guarded by number 20, that's uh, Cannon Johnson. Yeah, he must definitely be a threat to them. They are double teaming him all over the pitch here, way out to the good 40 feet, 40 yards from You're the You're right. They double teamed him all the way from the back, all the way out to midfield. There's a shot knocked down low, knocked away by the goalie, Flynn Pierce. Oh, nice. Uh, he wasn't able to get a shot. I'm off. sorry, Pierce Flynn, I mean, Pierce Flynn. Rams still with the ball. Out on top, number 19, and, and that is Gavin Yeomans. Now back behind the net. And back there, that's number 15 for the Rams. That's Elliot Evans. Rams with the ball. Evans back behind the net. Co is definitely stretching their defense out there. Rams had three players back behind the net that time, trying to set something up out front. Now they got players in the middle, well, right in front double, of the net. Double team here, so somebody's alone somewhere. All right, Glenco must have more defensive players back. Two to two, our score here at Delta Park. We're at Strasser Field under the lights. Ah, Glenco has six men on defense back there, looks like. And um, Central Catholic has five on offense. And that's why they're able to do that double team there so much. All right, tied with the ball. They're going to send it forward to the goalie. 
and he sent it forward. Pierce Flynn in goal for the tide. Sutton Yazzalino in goal for the Rams. Two to two our score. There's a flag for something. There's a shot knocked away. We have a penalty and run the Rams players coming off the field. That is number one, Luke McElligot. And is there already a Ram player off to the side? I see two players. No, I think down. one of them is a substitute waiting to come in. Oh, they are very short players now. Power play advantage here for Glencoe. They're out on top. Game tied at two. And they'll send it back out on the top again. There's a shot. Yazzolino blocks that one and falls on it. Nice job by the goalie, Sutton Yazzolino. Gets that one away and Rams head up field. Rams with the ball. I'm Dave Hall along with Steve Roberts. Thanks for joining us tonight. Luke McElligot with the ball. <coughs> Darts inside, looks for help. Nice job defensively, run off of the ball. Rams still with the ball now, they send it all the way back out on top. That's McElligot with the ball, number one. And there was a, a, a shot that rolled across the goal mouth. <coughs> Wind picks up here at Delta Park. It looks like the um, offense here is resetting a bit. Midway through the second quarter here, 2-2 two, two our score. We've not had any scoring here in the uh, second quarter. It's a shot. Oh, far away. Rams still with the ball. And now the tide with the ball on offense. Straight ahead. They got somebody cross field. Oh, but defense gets back. Rams run, or I'm sorry, tied around the outside. In front of us, that's number 12 for Rams. <coughs> I'm sorry again for the Crimson Tide, and that's Carson Wilson. There's a shot, hard shot, wide to the left.
Hai Bodo And that ball goes back I don't have to start on offense again Carson Wilson with the ball on the top Back behind the net. There's a hard shot. That was a that was a goal. Did we see who scored that goal? Number twelve? Okay. Out on top that was Carson Wilson with the goal. And for the first time tonight, Glenco is on top. <coughs> so Glenco with a couple of goals here after being down two to one. They're now up three to two on the goal by Carson Wilson. Face-off coming up. And the ball loose. Still hasn't been picked up. There's a whistle. Steve, I was talking to the referees beforehand. There's two referees here tonight. There's normally three. Okay. And they were telling me they're having trouble finding uh, lacrosse referees. In fact, one of the referees tonight, it's from Washington. They called him down to to, to do the match. Uh -huh. Yeah, that seems to be a, 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 something's going on with rugby. They're looking and lacrosse. And I read an interesting article on that. Uh, a lot of re different reasons for that. One of them being incivility towards the referees. Yeah, you know, I, I'm, you know I'm, with, I'm with little guys in my class and they're big sports fans. But I am so surprised when they're away from the game how hard they are on the officials. It's like, you know, I was taught, you know, regardless of what the officials call, if you're going to win the game, you're going to win the game, you know. Often there's a bad call late, but there was something that happened earlier that you could have made up for it and you didn't. So, but um, yeah, they are so hard on the officials. It's like, you know. The referees aren't paid a whole lot of money and, you know, and not only that, you know, but these are emerging sports, lacrosse, right. rugby, right. and that. And you've got to find players who know the game to be the referee. Right. Yeah, so you have, to, you have to probably go within the college ranks to see if you can get some players or some coaches from there. And right. And they're so busy in their season, they can't always do it. So, you know, it, I can imagine how difficult it is. I have been to sporting events lately where I've seen young kids who are referees. Well, fortunately, we have two with us tonight who are keeping control of this game. All right. Glencoe with the ball and the lead, three to two. Glencoe. Sends it out on the top. Number two with a shot, a hard shot. That was uh, Thomas Tackley. And there's a nice stop by Yazzolino. Sends the ball forward, but intercepted by the Crimson Tide. Out on top, inside, and a hard shot. That was a very nice play there. He nice play and a goal. He was able to catch a man cutting the lane there, and then the man was able to receive and shoot in one motion. All right, who, who was on that goal? Number 19, Ryan Morrow. Sounds like I've heard that number before tonight in goals. Morrow had uh, the second goal of the game in the first quarter for Glencoe. Two goals now for Ryan Morrow. And a 4-2 lead for the Tide. 
So four goals for Glencoe. One of them, one of them by Ryan Fossil, two by uh, Ryan Morrow, and one by Carson Wilson. That was a nice hard shot down low. Oh, yeah, it was, it was a nice play, nice pass, a nice reception and shot in one motion. Here come the tide right back inside, hard I shot. Those and, you know, they come right back strong. There's another goal. Yep. Just came right down, right in front, hard shot and in. You know, Central's going to have to tighten up here. It's hard when you get a team with momentum. They're going to come back hard again. All right, see if we can get our spotter to get this on that goal. Uh, that goal was by. That goal was by Carson Wilson, number 12, and that's his second goal yeah, of I've the heard game. His name before too, so we have some prime players out here who are putting the ball in the net. Number 19, Morrow, with two goals. Number Wilson, uh, 12, Carson Wilson, with two goals. Three goals here in the second quarter. Four, the tied after it was 2-2 two -two into one. Now it's 5-2. Crimson tied ahead. One of the Glen crew, uh, Glencoe film crew is our official spotter for us. Okay. When you hear me say who had that goal, he's nice, nice. He's, he's helping out. McElligot inside, close. Rams let go a shot inside. No. Blocked. Well, he was able to handle that one. Pierce Flynn in goal for Glencoe blocked that last shot. Five to two, tied lead. Rams with the ball. Central Catholic looking here to make an opportunity for themselves. McGilligan sends it back behind the net. Glencoe's been able to clog that middle a lot. They haven't found many opportunities. Trying to find their way inside. That was number 19 who tried to get a low shot in the net. Right. Gavin Yeomans. Kind of did a little spin move right in front of the net and then tried to send that ball low. Yeah, they haven't been able to put together much as a team, so we're going to see a lot of individual effort coming across like that. Almost a good opportunity there, just could not handle that pass. Rams had an opportunity just right in front, couldn't get a shot away. Miguel got out on top. Steve, I forgot your students are fifth graders, sixth graders? Fifth graders, fifth graders who love athletics and sports. I... When they talk sports, do they ever talk lacrosse? Um, I've heard them once or twice. You know, right now they were very much into the basketball and right. the season and, and that kind of stuff. And, um, and they, they themselves, I have about, I'd say half my boys in the class play on the school teams. and So they're, they're always there. It's slowed down a bit now that they transitioned into the track season ah. in baseball. There's a ball in front. There's opportunity there, yeah. And there's a shot. Glencoe does there's a, nice a goal right in front. There's a shot and a goal. Glencoe does a nice job when they get a one-on-one -on -one with the goalie of placing the ball where it's hard for him to reach that and, and they put a lot of power in their shots. Good flicks of the wrist there. All right, who was on the last goal? Number what? Number two of that goal for Glencoe. And that's Thomas Tackley. So Central Catholic really needs to try to put something together here. They want to go in at least with one goal this quarter. You know, score the first goal of the game in the first minute. It was 2-2 two to two at the end of the first quarter. It's now 6-2 to two yeah. in favor of Glencoe. I'm not sure who called the timeout there. Right, there's a timeout. I didn't see who called it either. Sounds like somebody wants to get a last last minute play in here. 
Well, the Rams definitely need to talk about something different because they've given up four goals this quarter. And the defense has given away some of those goals right in front. I mean, yeah, I think they played quite a bit of the time short one man um, from when I was counting there, and that definitely did not help them, especially with the uh, speed at which um, Glencoe can shoot the ball and pass the ball. So two goals in the game for Wilson. That's uh, Carson Wilson. Two goals for Ryan Morrow. One for Thomas Tackley and one for, who am I looking for here? Oh, uh, Ryan Fossil. The, the uh, Central Catholic goals won by Christopher Gray. I missed the first one on who it actually was. It might have been uh, Elliot Evans. Now, I missed your opening, Dave. Um, is Glencoe a, 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 a league team, or is this a non-league game? This, these are teams from different leagues. Okay. And has league play started yet? No. Okay. Glencoe is a team in the Metro League. And how, how is its record normally? They're generally pretty good. Okay. Like I said, they're 5-5 five and five right now. All right. So um, Central Catholic wanting to have some hard teams to play here and improve their game. You know, the coaches like this. They see a lot of different things, and it helps them go back and practice to see how they can defend certain things, what opportunities they might create when they face this kind of defense again. We'll get a chance to see the Central Catholic girls uh, tomorrow night. And when I did talk to Coach Josh Peck, the boys coach, he told me he thought the girls' team was pretty good. Okay. That's number two. To, Thomas Tackley, who has one of the goals, back behind the net. Glencoe's sitting on that 6-2 lead right now. So again, Glencoe being very patient, swinging the ball around the hard. Um, you just never know when one of them are going to step up and try to shoot that hard, long shot. They're probably killing the clock here right now. They've got some good hard shooters, too. Yeah, I think they're Wilson and Tackley both fired in those balls last time. They're just killing the clock here. Uh, when it gets under 10, they might take a shot. Back behind the so net, they, they move in the front. The here. They're looking for somebody here. There's Outside, the there's the hard shot. Yeah. It was by Tackley. It looks like we got one or seven seconds left. They were Our setting team. up Tackley for a shot, and he took a hard yeah. one. There it is. There's Good the second. horn. That is the end of the first half. And our score at the end of the first half, it is Glen, um, I'm sorry, it is Glencoe 6, Central Catholic 2. It was 2-2 two -two at the end of 1, 6-2 right now. I want to tell you about our sponsors tonight again, Pacific Fence. Pacific Fence is a Schoenheit family business serving the Northwest since 1921. From backyards to ball fields, from prisons to primary schools, Pacific Fence has you covered. Need a fence? Call Pacific Fence. And Hunt Painting is a proud sponsor of Central Catholic Athletics. They're now in their third generation of students at Central Catholic, and they're happy to continue to be part of the Central Catholic family. Here's to another great year of success both on and off the field for all Central Catholic student athletes. All right, we're at halftime. We're gonna take a break for a few minutes. We'll come back with about a minute to go before the start of the third quarter and we'll continue action here at Strasser Field at Delta Park where our score is Glencoe six, Central Catholic two.
All right, welcome back. We are at halftime. We're just about ready to get the third quarter started here at uh, Strasser Field at Delta Park. I'm Dave Hall along with Steve Roberts for Oregon Sports Beat. We're bringing you 6A boys soccer featuring the Central Catholic Rams and the Glencoe Crimson Tide. It was 2-2 two two at the end of one. The Rams actually scored less than a minute into the game to take a 1-0 lead. 2-2 two two at the end of one. Four goals by the Crimson Tide in the uh, second quarter made this score six to two where we stand right now both teams are still over the side the whistle did sound for them to head out onto the field steve lacrosse is one of those games that you can actually get a bunch of scores in a short period of time you know you score you go back out to do a face off you grab the ball run in and score yeah, I in fact Glencoe did that exact scenario in the uh, second quarter. Definitely want to take advantage of momentum in this game. Once you have it, you want to keep it. Uh, you want to convert scores out of it. Um, um, you want to go quick. You'll see most teams, once they score, they're going to they're gonna attack quick. They're not going to come out and run a, a pass around offense. They're going to try to go to the goal quick to see if they can score again. I'm wondering if this is one of those uh, bring your dogs to the ballpark day. <laughs> Yeah, we got a couple of them here I saw, you know. Um, my dog would have loved to come here, but you guys wouldn't have got any work done with him oh. around. I'm a dog person. He, but he'd have been all over this stuff. He's so curious. <laughs> I, have to, I, have to, I have to put him in his kennel when I'm working on the computer because he will seriously come up, look at it, look at me, and then paw, my la paw the laptop. What kind of dog do you have? Border Collie. Oh, okay. Smart as a whip. All right, the Rams are heading back out now. Strasser Park at Delta Fields, our location. Rams won the JV game three to one. They scored a couple of times in the fourth quarter to win that one. So you didn't get a chance to see the basketball game last night? No, you know, I was, again, I was, um finishing up report cards and grades and getting ah. them in because they had to be printed this morning and went home. And so my time was really locked up. I didn't catch I didn't catch too much. You know, I like I like commentating. It makes me feel involved in the game. I've never been a big spectator of sports. Unless, oh. Unless it's a team that, you know, for whatever reason, right. I like to follow. Or, well, I'm a baseball fan. And from uh, the yeah, last two weeks, I've been watching I, baseball been, all the time. My eyes have lit up when we started those first <laughs> baseball games there. Next week, we'll have our first softball game. It'll be next Thursday. I believe the start time is 3.45. By the way, we're Oregon Sports Beat, and if you want to uh, keep up with what we are doing, go to OregonSportsBeat.com, and we have our schedules for April and May posted. It'll give you all the things that we're doing and all the uh, uh, locations and times. Next Monday night, our TV show will be on Oregon. It'll, it's called Sports Beat TV. And uh, you can tune, that'll be on channel 11 at 5 o'clock. Happened to watch last night, it was our preview show of the Northwest Shootout that Oregon Sports Beat is doing this Saturday. Yeah, definitely if you're in the high school sports in Oregon, uh, you want to check out Oregon Sports Beat TV. Um, gives you an opportunity to get some behind the scenes look at what's going on with the different teams. I believe I checked earlier in our our May, April and May calendars, we had 19 events on it. That's 19 live sporting events. 
Rams with the ball out on top. Number seven was Tavis Chandler. Cross on the outside. Turn inside, that was number 15. That was uh, Elliot Evans. So Central Catholic Rams are definitely trying to make something happen here. They're trying to penetrate inside, find a, find a player who can get a good shot off here. Lots of, lots of motion moving into the middle of the, of the pitch there in front of the goal. I know I've been saying number 15 was Elliot Evans. It's actually Elliot DeFrancesco Evans. He's with the ball right this minute. Swings around the outside to the and right scores. and shoots and scores. Rams scored early in the first half, early here in the second half. So he comes around the end there and was able to get a, a, a nice position on his defender and found a seam right there with no defenders there, him and the goalie, and did a nice job of placing it low on the inside of the net. Elliot DeFrancesco Evans. Six to three now. Glencoe still with the lead. Just underway here in third quarter action. Rams right back with the ball. They could use another quick goal right here. Chandler, number seven. So he gets inside here. Will he go? He looked for a pass, but um, could not get it in. Ball comes back out. Chandler picks it back up. Rams by no means oh, out of nice, this. There's nice. a ball inside. Knocked away by the goalie, but the Rams come back up with it. He and there's a at? shot. Oh. Elliot D. Francesco Evans that time got the ball up, right hand, held it up high, and then swished it backwards yeah, to his left and over scored. His shoulder. Good, good field present there, knowing where the goal is. Took the goalie totally by surprise. Didn't see it coming. Nice job there by that Central Catholic player. So another goal for Elliot D. Francesco Evans. Two quick goals here by the Rams. They were down by. By four at six to two, have cut that lead in half. Six four tied leads. Whatever Coach Josh Peck said at halftime, it's working. Mm -hmm. Rams can't go to sleep on defense now just because they've scored a couple. Here they come back with the ball, Tavis Chandler. I'm sorry. That was not an explosion. <laughs> Steve just lost his microphone. <laughs> we didn't blow the place up. It just kind of microphone slipped off there. You know, I got, I got my hoodie on and my hat on and a blanket on top. So, you know, everything got kind of lost in there for a moment. Yeah, I know, the, I know all you Portland listeners are wondering, what has he bundled up for? Well, guys, right. I'm from Southern California, you know. Yeah, I'm from Ohio. It's still cold. cold. <laughs> Six of four our score here. Glencoe leads. Two quick goals by the Rams have cut that lead though in half. Tied behind the net. Good job defensively by the Rams. They've got the middle all clogged up right now. There's a shot. Oh, a bit there high there. That was a shot over the top of the net. Looked to me like he was going to shoot it low, and it went high. Mm -hmm. Yasolino watched it go over the net. Still Glencoe ball. Ball comes back to midfield and saved there, but picked up by the Rams. Loose now on the ground. Now the Rams have it. This is McGilligan, and he loses it. We kind of got a rugby scrum going here in midfield. Yeah. Nice block on a shot that time by Yazzolino. Sutton Yazzolino 
And that ball's gonna go out. It'll be Glencoe ball. You know, Steve. <laughs> I don't know if this Steve, blanket is more more trouble than it's worth here. You know, I, I'm, I hate to tell you this, Steve, but you needed instructions with that blanket. I know, I know. I think I'm trying to do too much with it. Glencoe with the ball. Fell down. Let's see who the ball actually is going to. I believe. I believe. Did we call a penalty? <coughs> <here? coughs> All right, we did. There's a penalty. Glencoe player coming off. Actually, Looks did like I get that Central wrong? Catholic I, player. I, Central Catholic player came off. And this has hurt them a lot today. They've been short man, men on the pitch, and um, Glinko has taken advantage of that whenever they can. All right, let's see what the Crimson Tide can do with a man advantage. Taken away by the Rams. Here come the Rams back quickly ahead in the middle. And taken away. Tide quickly trying to get down and use that man advantage that they got. Tide passing around the outside. They lead six to four. Ball loose. There's a whistle. And it's going to be tied ball. Out on top. Tied trying to set something up. Rams still got the middle all clogged up right here. Good defensive day play there by Central Catholic, not, not giving him a good look on the inside. Can't tell if that was a shot, shot or, a or a pass. pass. Yeah. Went across the front, but not close to the goalie. Still six to four. Remember, Rams are one and two right now in act 19 or in 2019 action. Crimson Tide, they are five and five. Crimson Tide out on top. They're looking at, looking for a couple players inside there. Teams that are at equal strength. There's a shot from the outside. Yazzolino sends it forward. Here come the Rams forward. Six to four, our score here at Delta Park. Rams quickly forward, now pull up. Have we got a timeout? Looks like it. Timeout on the field. Timeout on the field, six four, our score.
I want to remind you about our great sponsors, Pacific Fence. That's a Schoenheit family business, and they've been serving the Northwest since 1921. From backyards to ball fields, from prisons to primary schools, Pacific Fence has you covered. Need a fence? Call Pacific Fence. And Hunt Painting, they're proud to sponsor Central Catholic Athletics, and they're now in their third generation of students at Central Catholic and they're happy to continue to be part of the Central Catholic family. Here's to another great year of success, both on and off the field, for all Central Catholic students and athletes. Six to four, our score as we near the end of the uh, third quarter. All right, I'll check with our crew. Are we are we eligible for hazardous duty pay tonight? <coughs> okay. I've actually I've actually earned hazardous duty pay in the past. I remember serving in a war zone and my country giving me $65 a month to do that. As a teacher, I was um, granite sofa status of forces agreement when I was in Israel we were under the same contract with the government as the military it's okay I would have done it for nothing <coughs> I'm worried about you buddy yeah, you know, this cough that went away, and now it seems like whenever I get a little chill or cold, it yeah. comes back. You'd have to get better to die. Yep. And then a lack of sleep this week just lowered my resistance. I'm sure that's why I'm feeling like a nice There's shot. a shot and a goal. All right, that's the goal, and that's number 15. <coughs> That is number 15 again. That's a natural hat trick for Elliot DeFrancesco Evans. Three goals in a row here in the third quarter. Yeah, it we, makes our score seven to or six to five. We've seen some nice individual effort on both teams today. So DeFrancesco Evans with a natural hat trick. With the ball again, this time passes off on the side. There's a shot wide. So Rams, who had fallen behind 6-2 to two at halftime, now have come out in the third quarter and got three straight goals. Cut this lead to one, 6-5. to five. Exciting game. Chandler in front. There's a shot. Oh. <coughs> Right, is that a goal? Did that go in? It did go in. And that was number seven, wasn't it? Yep. Another goal for the Rams. That's a very nice goal there. The question is, was there a penalty um, right before the shot or not? Let's see what they're talking. They're talking to the Rams players now. He did a nice job sneaking that underneath the goalie there that time. That was number seven, Tavis Chandler. And just like that, we're back to even. Four straight goals by the Rams after four straight goals by the Crimson Tide. Six to six, our score now. Momentum on the side of the Rams, clearly. <coughs> You know, when four straight goals by the Crimson Tide got this to six and two, I thought the thing was looking maybe a little bit bleak, but whatever the Rams talked about at halftime, they've came out and have gotten four straight goals, three of them by Elliot DeFrancesco Evans, and the last one by Tavis Chandler, making this score six to six now. You know, in games like this, you have players who step up, they kind of take their game to another level, um, they look 
play a little bit sharper and see things a little bit differently. So, um, you know, you, you need those players on your team. And we've seen a little bit of that on Central Catholic today. You know, uh, Steve, that uh, obviously four straight goals and it's an offensive production by the Rams. But to me, the real difference has been on defense. The Rams have clogged up everything in the middle. Yeah. Yeah, they've done a nice job keeping any inside plays away. Most of the points that um, Glencoe has got has been individual efforts from outside. Rams now content to pass it around the outside. Chandler out there, DeFrancesco Evans out there. <coughs> comes Glencoe. Lost the ball, picked back up by the Rams, now picked back up by Glencoe. He's over, offside. He's, he's on the line, he's offside. One of the uh, Ram defensemen, number 12, came forward and uh, he has to stay back behind the line, Steve, he came up. And I think... Is it, is it designated players or do they have to have... Is it designated players or do they have to have so many back? So many back. Okay, because they had more than enough back because one the offensive player was late coming up. Ah, okay. One of the assistant coaches was yelling, you know, it's offside, he's offside. But you if know, they had a defense, a, another player back, that would have been yeah. enough. And we, we talked about that, you know, that's why it's hard to get officials. <laughs> because he came up to the line, he tried to stop, and I think he had his toe on the line. And the coach was screaming offside. But you had a, you had an offensive player. Nobody called it. Yeah, there was an offensive player who came across the line after he stepped back. So they must have had more than enough people back. Was there a goal there? Yes, there was. Oh, well, we were talking. There was a goal scored. The Crimson Tide scored a goal. Really? Who scored the goal? I didn't see it. Did you see who All right, let's get it here for. Uh, Lenko, and it was number five who actually scored, and that's Ryan Fossil. Oh, wait a minute. Let's see here. Yeah, that's it. Nathaniel Tackle. So it's, the score is actually seven to six favor of uh, the Crimson Tide. Sorry, we missed that there. I didn't see it slide under the net down there. Then the teams came back and realized that Gordman scored. Looking for some inside play. Can't find any here. Yeah, lined up, he wanted to shoot. Running in circles on the outside. <coughs> Strong defensive play by the Rams outside. Hard shot, takes a big bounce. That's gonna go out back. So seven to six, our score Glencoe leads. In the front, there's a shot stopped by Azzolino. Sudden Azzolino, the goalie, takes a trip around the net. And passes off to the side. Here come the Rams forward. Quinco likes a double team there. Now I know the boys are allowed to make much more contact than the girls can, um, but what is the rule on the on the blocking or the pushing like that? 
Well, obviously, it's not a penalty here or a foul. Huh? I don't believe the girls can do it at all. Right. Can you see how much is on the clock over there? Um, I'm in 201 or something. 201, all right. That's 201 left to go here in the third. We were at 6-2 Glencoe at the start of the third. It's now 7-6 Glencoe. This is a timeout. I'm not sure whose ball it is, but I'm sure both teams are putting together some sort of offensive strategy here. Maybe um, Glencoe is looking at if they if they have the ball to waste some of the clock a bit and get a shot made in the quarter. Could, could be. Central Catholic may want to do the same thing, hoping to tie it, or um, they may go quickly to the goal. Seven six, our score. Glencoe leads. That last goal was by Nathaniel Takla. Takla. All right, Rams with the ball. They come forward behind the net now. Send it out in front. Oh, nice one there. There's a shot. Uh, Wide. Good idea. Yeah, that was a nice pass to penetrate there, and he was able to get a shot off, just went wide with it. It was DeFrancesco Evans who got the shot off. There he is. All right, that's the end of the third quarter. And our score at the end of three, Glencoe seven, Central Catholic six. Two in the first for Glencoe, Four in the second, one in the third for seven for Central Catholic, two in the first, none in the second, and four in the third for six. Seven six our score. Twelve more minutes of action left here. So again, we have a good one here tonight. Uh, lots of goals scored, um, lots of individual efforts. Although we did have some nice team play, penetrating the ball inside breakaways with um, breaking and finding a player cutting a, a lane there. We had some really nice goals scored tonight so far. And we've had four goal runs by each team. Right. At 2-2, two to two, Glencoe ran off four goals to make it 6-2. And at 6-2, to two, Central Catholic ran off four goals to make it 6-6. Six, six. So we'll see who gets the momentum in this fourth quarter here, and that can really determine the game, whoever has the momentum. Both teams have uh, kind of thrived off some momentum. All right, both teams headed back out now. We'll start the fourth and final quarter, seven to six. Glencoe leads. All right, set for the face-off here. There's a whistle, we're underway in the fourth quarter. 
Central Catholic picks it up. That was a nice feed there. He's been having problems controlling that with the other um, face-off person. He was able to just push it back to his teammate. We've changed in, so the Rams now moving from our left to our right. White uniforms, cardinal lettering. Glencoe, black uniforms, crimson lettering. Oh, nice inside cut. Rams. That's Luke McGilligan out on top. Oh. Behind the net. And a whistle. Substitutions check in for both sides. Seven six our score. <laughs> Tied back behind the net. Move forward. The ball's loose in front. A couple of high jumps for the ball. Oh, got it. Nice place inside. And there's a shot wide by the tide. Good job defensively for the Rams that time by number 16, Giannassi Gelasso. There we go, there we go. Take care of the ball, guys. Good job for him. Here come the Rams. Francesco Evans with the ball. Good pass, good pass. Sends it forward. Nice. In front. Oh, Rams had a player there. standing right in front. Couldn't get the ball to him. Yeah. They had uh, Gavin Yeomans right in front. Couldn't get him the ball. Yeah, that was nicely set up on the break there, unfortunately. Could not get that ball crossed to the open man. Hey, if you guys get in a jam, I can speak French. <laughs> Our crew says that the, the computer has switched to French on their instructions. Last menu item. Whatever application you're going to go to the last menu item. You see, that's where you'll find the preference there. All right, that's a goal. That was a goal we for the Rams. Go here, yeah. This is even at 7-7. Did you see who the goal was by? 12? Okay. The goal for the Rams was by number 12. Christopher Gray, that's his second of the game. So Christopher Gray with the goal, and we're even at 7 now in the fourth. Rams seven, Crimson Tide seven. And uh, Steve, I would say that the, the contact is picked up in the game. Oh yes. Ball loose. And there's a scrum for the ball there picked up. Still not picked up, I'm sorry. The Rams now have it. Here comes McGilligan forward. 8-8 eight, eight, uh, or 7-7 seven, okay. seven our score. Rams certainly attacking right now. They've got number two, and that's uh, Sam Grube down yeah. in front of the net. This big kid on that far side there just looking for an opportunity to develop. They almost had him once earlier. 
also down there in the front. Uh, let's see. Number 19, and that's Gavin's Yeomans. So Rem's got a bunch of players right there in the front. Tried to lob it in front and get a shot away that time. Couldn't get the ball inside. There is a shot and a goal. Rams score. You know, they are finding a way. That's what good teams do. They are finding a way to put it in that goal. Who'd you have on the goal there? What's that? Oh, no. I... Number what? 19. All right. I told you they'd been trying to set up number 19, and that goal was by number 19, Gavin Yeomans. And the Rams go on top. So a goal by uh, Christopher Gray, a goal by Gavin Yeomans, and the Rams are on top eight to seven. Good job, the Rams have come down twice and tried to set him up in front. And that time they got it to oh, him, there's him a goal. Yeah, he got inside very well. It looks like he's in the box there. There's a goal by the Tide, eight, yeah. eight our score. Mm, let's see, the referee's talking out there, but I'm pretty sure that's a goal. Yes, it is. Yeah, he had to have released it. He ended up in the um, circle there, but I think he released it before he got in there. Yeah, nice no call. <laughs> <laughs> Who had that goal for the... Uh... Good job, ref. Yeah, really good job. <laughs> All right. That goal was by number... 12, Carson Wilson, and that's a hat trick for him. Hat trick for Carson Wilson. He had two in the second quarter, one here. 8-8 eight, eight our score now. Both teams now on the score. Rams now with the ball. With the ball for the Rams. Number five, that's Tian Faulkner. Sends it out on top. It's like they're trying to get defense to spread out here. They are trying to spread the defense. That usually means they're looking for a lane, some individual effort like this. Elliot DeFrancesco Evans in front. Ball loose on the ground, picked up. There's a whistle. Although we've had both teams with four goal runs, it's been a very well played game. There's a collision and a whistle. A timeout. Timeout. Glencoe, yeah. Glencoe wants to take a timeout. Eight eight R score. It's two to two at end of one. Six. Two, at the end of two, Glencoe led. The, the score was 7-6 um, Glencoe at the end of three, and it's now 8-8. Eight eight. Well, Steve, this is going to go down to the wire. Yeah, you know, um, both teams are still very much into it. Um, you know, we can get a goal any moment now. There's not um, been a, a, a time where teams have been able to stall or play defense for gee, more than a couple of minutes before a team got a good shot or made a goal. We have one of the Glencoe film crews right next to us, and he's able to stop that action and play it back, and that's how we're getting official confirmation ah, on, on okay. who those goals are. That's nice. why you hear me asking him nice. who was on that goal because nice. he's able to look right at it. It's always nice. 
Got so, a play back, play yep. back in this camera. So when we tell you those goals, those are official tonight. Tomorrow night we'll be back here at Strasser Field at Delta Park. Seven o'clock's our start time. Central Catholic girls, Liberty girls. Saturday afternoon, six o'clock or four o'clock. It's the Northwest Shootout. That will be the All Stars from us, from Oregon against the All Stars from Washington. Girls game at four, boys game at six. Boy, they got some great players too. Girls game, two of the girls from state champion Benson, Sierra Ellingson, and uh, Taylor Lede, Darren Hickok from uh, Grant, Kalani Hayes from Clackamas. Boys have maybe the, some two of the best players in the state in Aaron Deloney from Grant and Marcus Ahonis from Jefferson. But Washington has some great kids too, and they've got kids. Two of their kids have got scholarships to Gonzaga. Oh, One's nice. got a scholarship to Michigan. Oh, cool, cool. So it'll be a match. We'll bring it to you live. Kurt Goldsdorf and I on the call. Out of motion there. There was a nice, there was a block by Yazzolino, the ball out front, picked back up by Crimson Tide. 8-8 eight, eight our score. There's a shot. Oh, managed to sneak that in. The bar, right? A low shot went right underneath the Azzolino goal for the Crimson Tide. They take the lead at 9-8. Kunko has done a nice job of placing the ball in many different locations there. It's hard for the goalie to chew up when the ball is hitting many different spots. Do we have a confirmation on the goal? Number two? Okay. Second goal of the game for Ryan. Fossil. I'm, I'm, let me check my thing. That might be his third. I'm sorry. Second goal of the game for Thomas Tackle. Okay, 9 to 8, Glencoe Lee. That, game, that goal was by Thomas Tackle, and that's his second goal of the game. So, Thomas Tackle has two goals, and Nathaniel Tackle has a goal for Glencoe. Carson Wilson has three. Glencoe still with the ball, and out on top. Looks like they want to pass the ball around, Steve. Maybe they want to sit on the clock a little bit. Yeah. No, now they work their way inside. Go, go, go. Was there a call there? That was look, it looked like a bit being forced there or it's a timeout. I couldn't tell. It, no, it's a timeout, I believe. There was movement on the goaltender, but the attacker fell down. I wasn't sure whether he was tripped or fell down. Apparently he fell down and there was a timeout call. Nine to eight, our score, Glencoe leads. Glencoe led seven to six at the end of three. Each team has a couple of goals here in the fourth. You make out the clock, Steve, what it says? How much? Okay, 4.53 is the time left in this game with a one goal lead for the Crimson Tide.
We're in the uh, Oregon Sports Beat Memorial Tent. <laughs> well, you know, it has been um, seen a lot of different weather patterns this trip. That helps if you put your microphone yeah. down there. <laughs> it has seen a lot of different weather patterns this tent, and um, so it we has to memorialize it. Yes, it has. Push, push. Glencoe with the ball and the lead. We're under five minutes. Rams take it here. They come forward quickly. Rams have done well when they've moved forward quickly. Inside. McGilligut. I'm sorry, that's number five for the Rams. Oh, that's Tian Faulkner. Now they set it back out on top and start up. Chandler. Evans has a hat trick. He's been hot. They always keep a man low down on the weak side for opportunity. That's Evans, little spin move, trying to get free. Oh, nice, nice, oh. And there's a shot wide left. That was a nice play there with a man cutting. I had a cutter coming in that time. Just wide. <laughs> Nine to eight, our score, Glencoe leads. Faulkner with the ball on the top. Chandler. Chandler trying to draw defenders off. Said goes back behind the net. Inside, trying to get to the front. Look like there's a struggle for the ball there. Got a couple of players down behind the net. Looks like they're wording it to Central Catholic. Central Catholic with the ball. And Rams will still have the ball. Tries to get a screen there on a shot. Yeah. This is Miguel at number one. Oh, intercepted there. Nice play by um, Glencoe that time. Glencoe stepped right in the passing lane that time and came up with the ball. Oh, but we have a little mix up here. Ball gets loose on the ground, but picked up by Crimson Tide. And the ball loose, picked up. Rams quickly in front. De Francesco Evans. Number 15. Rams get set up. Nine to eight, Glencoe leads. Rams talking it over what they want to do, send the ball out on top. Faulkner with it right now. Oh. Loses the ball. Still bouncing around there. Uh, Rams recover. Rams got it back. They are clearly trying to set somebody up in the middle. Oh, he was winding up there. Chandler was winding up and then thought it over. Yeah, uh, Glenco, thought better of it. Glencoe's got uh, three defenders back there right near the go, so it's going to be a hard shot. A shot that time. Left-handed shot. That was number 19, uh, Gavin Yeomans. Little spin move inside. And Tide comes up with it, sends it out. And a whistle. No 
No, Glencoe with the ball. Glencoe with the ball and clearly down front. Nine to eight. I can't see for sure, but I believe we're under a minute to play. Oh. All right, we are under a minute, under a minute to play here. Nine to eight, Glencoe leads and with the ball. Rams gotta get the ball and get something moving forward. And right now, Glencoe can tend to sit on it. There it is, that's the end of the game. That's the end of the game here at Strasser Field at Delta Park and our final score, Glencoe nine. Central Catholic eight. Glencoe goes to six and five on the year. Central Catholic one and three. And Steve, your thoughts on the game? You know, it was a well-played game, um, exciting game with all the goals, a, a really a mixture of shots. Great individual effort on a lot of the goals by both teams here today. You know, it's one of those games where, you know, another quarter, we might have seen a different, different result here. So, um, you know, cheers to both teams for playing a well-executed game tonight. A little bit physical there in that second half, but... Um, you know, the refs kept it as clean as they could, and the teams played as well as they could. It was 2-2 two to two at the end of one. Then the uh, Glencoe Crimson Tide went on a goal-scoring spree and got four straight goals. And uh, at the half, it was 6-2. to two. The Rams came right back and got four goals at the start of the third quarter, make it 6-6, six and six, but the Tide got a goal right there at the end of the third. At the end of three, it was 7-6, to six, and then both teams with two goals in the fourth quarter, the game winner coming by Thomas Tackle uh, to make the final score nine to eight. So I want to thank our sponsors tonight, Hunt Painting. Hunt Painting is proud to sponsor Central Catholic Athletics. They're now in their third generation of students at Central Catholic, and they're happy to continue to be part of the Central Catholic family. Here's to another great year of success, both on and off the field for all Central Catholic student and athletes. And Pacific Fence, it's a Schoenheit family business. They've been serving the Northwest since 1921. From backyards to ball fields, from prisons to primary schools, Pacific Fence had you covered. Need a fence? Call Pacific Fence. All right, tomorrow night, seven o'clock, back here at Strasser Field, Central Catholic girls versus the uh, Century Girls in La Crosse. Friday afternoon at 4 o'clock, the Northwest Shootout, the girls, 6 o'clock, the boys. Next Wednesday night, we'll be back here at Strasser for a goals match. I don't remember the other team right off the top of my head. It'll be Central Catholic. And next Saturday afternoon, Central Catholic softball. And we'll be back here at uh, Delta Park. I want to thank our crew tonight, our uh, director and the cameraman, the engineer, audio guy, the whole bit, Jim Thompson, our audio guy and cameraman, Alva Myers, my broadcast partner, Steve Roberts. Steve, final thoughts? Uh, and we want to recognize you too, Dave. Dave <laughs> Hall, you know, you know the, the voice of high school sports in Oregon. And, um, well, you thank know, you. It's been a good game tonight, a good one for us to start off our broadcast season of, of lacrosse. Will you go home, get some rest, take some medicine? I am. I'll do I the am. same and I'll dress warmer tomorrow night. You know, um, the pillow is calling my name already. <laughs> it's screaming for you. Yeah, it is. All right, I'm Dave Hall from Strasser Field at Delta Park. Our final score tonight in 6A lacrosse. It is Glencoe 9, Central Catholic 8. Good night, everybody.